Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at Anthony Casso. Casso obtained full membership status inside the Lucchese family in 1974 when he was 32 years old, a process known as becoming a made man. Casso was later assigned to Vincent Facchari's crew, which operated from 116th Street in Manhattan and 14th Avenue in Brooklyn. Casso quickly became close to another rising star in the family Victor Amuso after becoming full membership. This deal lasted 20 years and was defined by a slew of illegal acts, including drug trafficking, burglaries, and the assassination of informants. Casso then started responding to Christopher Fernari, better known as Christy Tick, the captain of the 19th Hole Crew. Casso and Amuso were both members of Fernari's 19th Hole Crew, and they both ran a crew named the Bypass Gang, which included highly trained locksmiths, safecrackers, and security alarm system experts. The Bypass Gang is still accused of committing bank and jewelry store burglaries around New York City and Long Island. During the 1970s and 1980s, the Bypass Gang stole more than $100 million from safe deposit boxes and vaults, according to law officials. Fornari approached Casso and recommended that he take leadership of the 19th Hole crew after being promoted to the role of conciliaire within the Lucchese family. Casso, on the other hand, declined the offer and suggested that Amuso be promoted instead. Casso stayed on as Amuso's assistant. Big things were happening in Cosa Nostra. Casso received a proposal from Caporegime Frank DeSico in December 1985 to remove the Gambino crime family's boss. John Gotti, a Gambino family captain at the time with whom Casso had collaborated on several heroin transactions, was involved in this operation along with other captains. They wanted to bring down Paul Castellano after Paul was arrested on the commission case. Gotti and DeSico turned to other mafia factions impacted by the mafia commission trial for assistance. Another co-conspirator with Gotti, Sammy Gravano, claims that after DeSico left a meeting, he brought back the news that Casso had sworn unwavering loyalty to the conspirators. DeSico used Castellano's carelessness, despite knowing that his house was bugged, as justification for killing him. However, Casso later informed Vic Amuso that he had tried to dissuade DeSico from proceeding with the assassination of a boss without first obtaining permission from the commission. He believed that such an act would violate the Mafia's rules, and the participants would be subject to retribution by the other four Mafia families. Despite Casso's reservations, Castellano was indeed murdered on December 16, 1985. Casso later criticized Gotti's actions as the beginning of the end of our thing. As Casso had forewarned, Lucchese boss Anthony Corallo and Genovese boss Vincent Gigante decided to retaliate by eliminating Gotti, DeSico, and all the other individuals involved in Castellano's murder. Amuso and Casso were tasked with carrying out these assassinations and were instructed to use a car bomb in an attempt to shift suspicion onto Sicilian mobsters, also known as Zips, who were connected to Castellano. Despite the long-standing prohibition against using bombs by New York City mafiosi, due to the risk of collateral damage, Sicilian mafiosi and members of the Cleveland crime family were known for employing explosives. Amuso and Casso made an attempt on the lives of Godi and De Chico by planting a bomb in De Chico's car when the two were expected to visit a social club on April 13, 1986. However, Gotti canceled at the last minute, resulting in the bomb killing De Chico and injuring a passenger who was mistakenly thought to be Gotti. In November 1986, Lucchese family boss Anthony Corallo predicted that the commission trial would result in a guilty conviction, ensuring that the whole Lucchese leadership would die in prison. Corallo summoned Casso and Amuso to Fernari's Staten Island house in order to uphold the family's half-century tradition of a flawless transition of power. Casso declined the elevation to boss and instead advised that Amuso become the new boss. Amuso legally took over the family in 1987, and Casso succeeded Fernari as consigliere. Casso took over as underboss after Mariano Macaluso retired in 1989. When Amuso and Casso were bosses of the Lucchese family, they shared the vast profits from the family's illegal activities. Amuso and Casso also earned more than $200,000 a year from the garment district racket, as well as a cut of all murders committed by the family's soldiers. Alphonse Darko became the capo of the Vario crew after Captain Paul Vario passed away in federal prison in 1988, according to Amuso. Darko was chosen by Amuso to lead a Lucchese construction panel in 1990. A confidential law enforcement source Casso referred to as his crystal ball gave him advance notice of an impending federal indictment in January 1991. Casso called Alphonse Darko, the cap regime of the Vario crew, to a meeting at the Rodman Gun at John Paul Jones Park in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, just before he and Amuso both went into hiding. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one.